Hi there, take seven. I'm doing King Henry tonight. It's the song I've been working on. I thought it was appropriate for this spoopy season. And my voice is uh, tired from the three in the morning bliss. That means I've had to drive up the... Uh... It's weird. I hear of other people, their voices get tired or whatever. They have to go down, but I have to go up. I don't know why that is. But anyway, moving along. Water, water. Okay, here we go. Yes, I can taste every pipe of water's been in. Here we go. That never. We're going to scratch that. Try again. That nary a man a wooing wind that lacks of these things three. A store of gold and open heart and full of charity. And this was seen of King Henry, though he lay quite low. She's taken him to a haunted hall, seven miles from. Three mistakes. I'm not even going to edit this one. It's only two minutes in. Here we go. Let never a man a wooing win the likes of these things three. A store of Your hawks, you King Henry, bring them here to me. 
your horse's hide and bring a drink to me. And he sewn up the bloody hide in a pot of wine put in. She drank it up all in one drop, left nary a drop therein. A bed, a bed, a bed you make for me. Oh, you must pull Gosh, I think my hand's gonna fall off. I hope that was a good take. Not I have to wait till tomorrow. But anyway, um, when I started looking into this song, as y'all know, I, you know, uh, others call themselves the fairy tale. You know, I, I, I guess I'm the historian because <laughs> I like to look up their meanings and their history, and then I'd like to try to find uh, original lyrics, which is difficult when you only have the internet for crimes. You know, you don't have a whole lot of resources. But with this one, I managed to discover. That it has been redone by a lot of fans, including Steel Eye Spam. Uh, some people actually penned new lines to it to humanize the monster and make her, like, all sad. Uh, one of the versions I, I read uh, is the King Henry did not want to um, follow her whims. And the tears rolling down the monster's cheek. And I'm like, look, it's already a pity bleep. Uh, make it more of a pity bleep, shall we? It's a pity bleep. But... Uh, in the time, in the times that this song was written, hospitality rules were just a wee bit different. And so I, I, uh, I, 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 I poke at it a little bit, not knowing all of the European hospitality customs, but, uh, there's a couple of things that I may or may not have heard, heard, uh, know or don't know. And, you know, I guess I need to poke some, some big YouTuber like the Metatron or something. Tell me about this. Um, but I'm getting to understand that where the king went, it was his domain. But I'm also going to understand that that wasn't always the case during these times. The song does date itself. 
um, with the pulling of the heather green to make a bed. Uh, so let's say the king had the right to go into this woman's house because it is her house. It, uh, let's just know this. She's a grizzly bride monster and it's a haunted hall. So it's her house that he has decided he's going to go party in. And as somebody who went away for the weekend to visit her parents once and came back to, to her house trashed from where people had a party because she was away and they wondered why she didn't want to talk to them anymore. <laughs> um, I can tell you, that's not pleasant. Uh, her, her, uh, so she's, she's demanding all of these impossible things from him and it's almost like she's pushing the limits. Um, Barry Brown Steed, that's bro um i mean he had he gave her some really fine things that she that she demanded um almost like it was a diary and uh but one thing i noticed uh while i was memorizing the song and learning it was when he pulls the heather green she did not request um anything more than you must pull the heather green and make it soft for me and there's probably stuff all over the hall that he could have made this bed out of and he chose his kingly robes uh, so, you know, <laughs> poor King Henry, I guess. Um, and at the very end, uh, I feel like the last lines about the, uh, bride, people cut them about how her stepmother did that. And I feel like this woman was cursed and... In, them day, in those days, you know, you were often cursed by your stepmother. That's like a trope that's carried forward through time. But it was always, it's really, really sad. It's this tragic thing. So those eight lines that always got cut carry forward the message of how it has been for this poor woman far better than 16 lines, in my opinion, my humble opinion, um, going on about her feelings to make it more like a pity bleep. <laughs> I, I, I would say this is probably the most famous pity bleep in history. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. I know. Oh, no. What am I going to do? I'm just going to take me in my red humor and I'm going to keep going with it. Y'all just deal. Y'all just deal. Somebody bring me some fry bread. I deserve some fry bread for this one. Um, so, I have enjoyed learning it. Uh, I have been, it has been requested that I will, uh, to, that I, uh, be at a, uh, Renaissance Fair in March. It's going to be that Renaissance Fair's first year. I'll be putting out more information about it as I learn. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be performing on stage or just running around as background color. We'll see. Uh, but I hope to, uh, have this song and many other songs along the same vein memorized and ready to go for this. I think that, um... Uh, it's a good song for the spring, but most of all, this Grizzly Bride story. And I only know it's a Grizzly Bride story because my good friend Leslie explained the Grizzly Bride trope to me. And I was like, well, I've only heard of Grizzly Husbands. Well, this is news. Um, grizzly Bride. Uh, you, <laughs> wow, things were nasty in Europe. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, and I'm hoping to have more lined up along that vein so that well, when I perform, I will have this lineup of spooky songs. But they're hard to find, and so we'll see what I can find and get. I hope you enjoyed it. Now to give you the, the customary. This is my 1960s uh, Harmony baritone. I know uh, I can tell that it's... um. A little younger than my other one because my other one is of a deeper throatier quality um, it's a little bit bigger the construction is a little bit more and I happen to know that in the 60s harmony was starting to struggle thanks to not because of cheaply made instruments automation um, cheap instruments coming out of Japan yeah killed harmony mostly mostly uh, but I could have changed the pegs, I suppose, all that kind of good stuff. But instead, what I do is I go through a lot of trouble to try to find the pegs, as do a lot of people. So it's a race, and I get I got lucky once and found one. That's how hard it is to get them before someone else scoops them up with has more money. Um, because my other one needs a peg, because one of its pegs won't hold. Um, but I, I really love their sound. They have the best sound, and... Uh, as y'all, as, as some of y'all know, I would like to get to where I can make my own instruments. And so I, I'm, I'm wanting to, uh, 
actually use Harmony's old pattern because in my opinion nothing sounds like an old 50s Harmony. All these beautiful baritones that I have played with over the years and, and handled, um, they sound great, but there's just something about the old harmonies, the, the old harmonies, the first harmony, the first harmony baritones, that they just have this, 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 I don't know. I don't know, it's, it's a, it's alive, I guess you could call it, but you can't get the mahogany <laughs> anymore. So well, if you, some people get old furniture that's falling apart and they use old furniture to make their instruments. And, oh, those instruments sound good. <laughs> There's ways. But anyway, this one's name is Melody. Love my Melody. And uh, I might play with Heron next. Anybody have any requests for me to learn or anything? I can't prom make promises, but I'm happy to, ta I'm happy to look and see what's up. Bye-bye.